Hi guys, this is TabletNews.com and I'm here with the iPad mini for a full review. You probably saw the unboxing of the device already and we're here with the first Apple tablet that has a diagonal other than 9.7 inches. This is the 7.9 inch iPad mini. It was launched at the beginning of November in stores. It costs $329 in the starting version and it's available in black and white. It's actually a combo between white and silver. This is the white version that we're testing here, as you can see. A beautiful tablet, beautiful design, typical for Apple. It fits all the leaked specifications and design that appeared before the tablet was launched. So once again launched in stores early November, we're reviewing it right now. And it has the specs of the iPad 2, but you probably know that. So let's see what this tablet is about and if all the rumors about it were true. Basically the design reminds me of a bigger iPod Touch, if you want or a bigger Galaxy Note if you can force a comparison and uh, not a smaller iPad, it doesn't feel like a smaller iPad it's more like a bigger iPod Touch or bigger Galaxy Note it's very thin and very light it weighs 308 grams so actually very very light it's about half of the weight of a normal 10 inch tablet with Android for example it's also very thin at 7.2 millimeters in thickness it's actually thinner than the iPhone 5 that's a landmark when it comes to being thin. At the bottom we have the lightning port, the one that we we'll also use on the iPhone 5 and the iPad 4. Plus these speakers right here have stereo speakers on the device. The same design in this area like on the iPhone 5 with the speakers and the uh, lightning port. Logo Apple at the back, 5 megapixel camera at the back with no flash. Up front we have the um, FaceTime, cam FaceTime camera 1.2 megapixel. FaceTime HD camera, the home button is below the 7.9 inch screen, it feels a bit rigid, that's what I can say about this home button, it's also a tad smaller and uh, well incorporated into the case, a bit too well incorporated, uh, so it's hard to press sometimes. At the top we have the on off button, right here, audio jack right here, and here we have the volume buttons and the button that uh, um, makes you enter the silent mode and also uh, blocks the portrait or landscape orientation of the device. Other stuff worth mentioning, well, we have this beautiful metallic ring around the device and the aluminum back offering you a lot of safety. The device is easy to hold with one hand but not to use with one hand. Apple promoted this iPad mini as a device that you could use with a single hand. Actually you cannot. It's also very nice to hold in landscape mode. It certainly feels like a good tablet, especially when playing games certainly feels like a console, as you can see it's the ideal uh, length in uh, landscape mode for you to play a decent game and do other tasks on it. Ok, so what can I say, you saw the cameras, the buttons and the fact that this is a pretty wide tablet in portrait mode for a 7 inch tablet, you can compare it to other 7 inch tablets and you see that it's wider since it's actually a 7.9 inch tablet. It's a bit of a fingerprint magnet the screen, it immediately sucks up fingerprints, sadly, although Apple claims that that doesn't happen. Ok, moving on to the hardware, this tablet comes in versions of uh, 16, 32 or 64 GB storage, it offers you Wi-Fi and Bluetooth 4.0, the display is a 7.9 inch one with a resolution of 1024 over 768, it's an IPS LCD with LED backlight and it has a 163 PPI pixel density that's uh, actually pretty good, it's better than the one of the iPad 2 but it's inferior to the iPad 3 for example. Inside we have a dual core Apple A5 CPU that's um, 1 GHz CPU on this tablet and here I'm checking out the weather as you can see and back to the hardware so dual core Apple A5 CPU the same CPU as the one on the iPad 2 everyone is calling this the smaller iPad 2 since it has the same specs 5 megapixel iSight camera right here it does 1080p video capture and the battery is uh, pretty impressive it's a 16.3 watt hour lithium polymer unit it easily passes the one day mark and I mean truly easily I've been using the tablet for three days on end and I didn't have to charge it so basically the normal user who actually browses the web a lot and does other tasks like uh, checking his email, entering YouTube, listening to some music 
you will actually get two days of use from this tablet. Basically, the tests are showing that the tablet will give you about 12 hours of normal use in a day. If you keep pounding it, playing games, taking pictures, listening to music, you'll get 12 hours. So it beats the Nexus 7 in the battery area. It also has a 3-axis gyroscope, accelerometer, ambient light sensor and 512 megabytes of uh, RAM, in case you're wondering, so not 1 gigabyte, but 512 megabytes of RAM, just like the iPad 2 actually. Also a digital compass on board and that's about it when it comes to the hardware on this device. Now it's time to check out the multimedia capabilities of this uh, little tablet and for that I'm going to test its video and audio abilities. Okay so let's see what the tablet can do when it comes to the video playback. As you can see we have some dock apps right here and among them we find the videos. So let's watch a trailer for Wreck-It Ralph. It's an interesting cartoon from Disney. Okay, so as you can see we have good viewing angles on this device and also we have uh, vivid colors, good colors, good viewing angles and the brightness is pretty good. Even when taking pictures with this tablet in the park I found myself surprised with the good brightness and sunlight behavior of the device. I must say that the 4 to 3 aspect ratio is a bit of a disappointment since you have those uh, black bars at the top and bottom but you can solve that if you press this button here it fits the image better to the screen but still you lose a bit of space at the top and bottom but at least you can alternate anyway the aspect ratio is a bit of a bummer on this device compared to the 16 to 9 uh, devices now moving on to the audio side so the conclusion was that the video was pretty good in spite of the lower resolution have, at least we have good viewing angles and good colors and good brightness now moving on to the audio we have a Linkin Park album here so let's listen to Numb speakers right here This is the kind of device that when you turn it all the way up, when it comes to the volume, it becomes a bit of a disappointment. So I have to say that when the volume hits its maximum level, the tablet will tend to vibrate at the back just like the iPhone 5 and the sound becomes strange, becomes distorted and that's a bad thing. So when it comes to the audio side, if you turn the volume all the way up, you're disappointing, the back vibrates and the speakers are distorted. But if you use a pair of headphones, preferably earpods, the audio experience is great, the bass is good. But once again, when the maximum volume is all the way up on the speakers, it's a bummer. So that's a pretty strange thing for Apple that has used us to great quality on its devices. Now it's time to test the camera of this device that was actually surprisingly good. I expect it to be disappointed. So here we are, we have this globe right here. I'm going to start the camera. We have a 5 megapixel camera at the back with backside illumination, 5 element lens, 1080p capture, video stabilizer, very nice touch to focus and very good autofocus. It also takes picture reasonably fast. And this is the picture I took earlier. Pretty good quality, I have to say. Sadly, we don't have that many options available when it comes to the camera, so don't expect to have panorama here, in spite of the fact that you have the latest 
iOS release. We can only play with grid and we can also switch to the video capture, the 1080p, 30 frames per second video capture. And now I'm going to show you some samples, so enough with this little globe right here. Some samples I took in a park using this tablet. For example, we got this one, it's a video sample using the 5 megapixel camera on the device. And now I'm going to show you my favorite picture of the ones that I took using this tablet. As you can see, a lot of flowers, bright colors. This is my favorite picture. So this is the fountain and you can actually see the water drops thanks to the good camera on this device. So overall, pretty good camera, especially if it's a sunny day. Since you don't have a flash, try to avoid situation where you actually need a flash. So overall, this iSight BSI camera is pretty good. That's the conclusion. Um, sadly there's no panorama, I don't think you could have used panorama on this tablet since it's so big and uh, strange to use in public. That's my opinion about tablet. tablets, you shouldn't use them in public to take pictures but that's an entirely different matter. So overall a good camera but I place it somewhere below the cameras on the best Asus Android tablets. I think those are the landmarks when it comes to quality imaging on tablets. Now we're moving on to the operating system, as you can see the experience is the one you're already used to, we got the notification bar, we got all these icons here, if you tap on an icon you can delete it just like that, press the X and you will uninstall it, or you can move icons on top of each other to create folders. This is iOS 6.0.1, the tablet got updated just one day after we received it, now I'm going to show you the virtual keyboard. Of the tablet here it is actually pretty comfy to use so let's access tablet news the Wi-Fi is also very fast on this tablet Apple implemented the latest technology when it comes to Wi-Fi so it actually got great speed when it comes to that this tablet also is also praised for displaying 30% more on the screen compared to its 7 inch rivals it's uh, thanks to its unusual diagonal size and its good resolution considering it's a 7 inch device although the resolution could have been a bit better and maybe even a retina display and here's the orientation in landscape mode so since this is not retina you won't exactly see uh, and read the text easily you actually have to zoom in a bit especially in portrait mode but now I want you to show you the keyboard like this and then in landscape mode this is the keyboard of course you can change it if you want some thumb typing you can do it like this easy thumb typing or you can get back to the docked version and the merged version of the tablet so that was the virtual keyboard and that was Safari and uh, the way you can view content in websites in portrait or landscape mode there's a cool feature here so if you go to the lock screen and you double tap the home button you'll access the uh, audio player on the tablet you can play a song okay you can go to the next song or change the volume without having to unlock the tablet so actually a pretty cool function of this device um, there's also another function available on the iPad that allows you to control the multitasking idea easily usually we do multitasking like this double press the home button and the apps that are running are available right here or we can switch quickly to this uh, player right here or to the brightness settings well there is now another mode so if I go into one of the apps that it's running like the music player I can switch between apps with a five finger swipe so five finger swipe I'm jumping to the browser now where tablet news was open now I'm supposedly going to the camera as you can see there is a bit of lag since there are quite a bunch of apps open and this is a more real-time multitasking so five finger swiping is the new multitasking there is also the idea of a five finger squeeze so the five finger squeeze will bring you to the home menu it's nice to see that Apple is implementing gestures on tablets not only they centered on the home button other things worth mentioning well is that we have Twitter and Facebook integration that are quite an important focus when it comes to iOS 6 it was focused a lot on socializing but you can also use the, their standard apps to socialize so we install the classic Twitter app you can see that it's adapted to the iPad use 
as you can see thanks to these main options right here like the connect discovered and me option you can see that the timeline of the updates is available right here at the center of the screen if you turn it in landscape it's it keeps this display so it's different from the one of the iPad of the iPhone excuse me it's an iPad specific app very easy to use and very simple to socialize on this tablet then we move on to Facebook with an interface that frankly I don't quite like I would have preferred using the an app called MyPad if you know it it's better organized for the iPad here we have the main options of the Facebook app with the news feed messages nearby some events and as you can see it's not that fast it keeps loading and loading and loading we can also resort to Google Plus we didn't install that but you know it's there and apparently Facebook will switch at some point at the single column but that's another thing entirely so I just show you the socializing area on this device you can also use the notification bar to tap and tweet or tap to post on Facebook and you can also enter the pictures area and send a photo to Facebook and Twitter right away so they're included everywhere in the operating system um, the tablet is fast as you can see I don't have any complaints aside from that five finger multitasking and maybe the occasional iMovie editing the tablet is actually pretty fast and you cannot feel that low resolution in spite of what I said earlier when you're in portrait mode you can't actually read the text of a piece of news you have to zoom in and on a retina display that wouldn't have happened okay now it's time to leave behind the software aspect and check out some benchmarks to see how the tablet does when it comes to performance okay so for benchmarks I'm going to use some of the captures I have uh, taken using this device but let me tweak the brightness a bit to make the experience more nice and now let's go into the benchmarking area so we'll start with browser mark here it is good old browser mark we scored 122,000 points on this iPad mini we compare that to the 123,000 point of the Nexus 7 however the Nexus 7 should receive Android 4.2 and could get a better result with that update overall we're pretty close to the Nexus 7 when it comes to browser mark testing we move on to Geekbench where we scored 751 and we compare that to the Nexus 7 1300 points so it's inferior to the Nexus 7 in Geekbench but it's superior to the iPad 2 and that scores about 750 obviously the two should score the same since they have the same specs so the score is pretty much the same for the iPad mini and the iPad 2 around 750 meanwhile the iPhone 4s scored 633 so this device is actually pretty pretty good um, okay so now it's time for the Sun Spider 0.9.1 JavaScript benchmark results in this one we scored a total of 1552.5 ms which means that uh, we're superior to the Nexus 7 that's called 1700 so the lower the better here and we move on to the benchmark called Limpack. Well, Limpack, what it does, it calculates the speed of the equation solving potential of the tablet. We scored the 122 M flops, while the Nexus 7 scores 174 M flops, so it's superior once again to the iPad mini. However, you will not feel that in the day-to-day -day use of the tablet. You will not feel that it's a slower tablet or anything like it. The Nexus 7 actually felt slow on some occasions, like when you're starting a game and exiting it, well this one didn't, so actually benchmarks don't tell the whole story. You should know one thing about this tablet, is that it does not have a GPS, so people were wondering if this device has a GPS or not, well it doesn't, at least not this Wi-Fi version that we're testing. The cellular version has one, Nexus 7 has one, and that's about it. Um, now let's try the notes app so I can show you if you want to write anything you can easily rely on the notes sync them with iCloud and open them on the tablet or something like that so with autocorrect on it's very easy to say don't forget to write a review very finger friendly this uh, keyboard so don't forget to write a review also in landscape mode once again 
don't forget to write a review very very easy to use so that's my point that the point I was trying to make very easy to take a note scribble it from the start and uh, exactly like Apple said in the official presentation it's easy to walk on the street flip pages and write stuff on the tablet with its comfortable virtual keyboard in the settings area you also have the new option called do not disturb it's available right here you can set it on or off to leave out notifications or uh, various messages that you receive to put them on silent and do not be disturbed in some uh, times of the day between certain hours and then there's iCloud integration so especially in Safari you can see that there's, there's a special iCloud options right here that you can synchronize your tabs with your other devices via iCloud and then there's also, also the option where you can read stuff offline also in Safari so we get the best out of iOS 6 there's also the email function available right here with the special iPad layout with the collection of emails on this side and the content of the email on this side with this collection of mailboxes and with this area for writing emails like this with sent from my iPad, CC, BCC strangely enough I tried hard to attach some content to an email but apparently it's easier to simply go to the photo section and select the sharing option and simply select mail it's easier to do that than to try to attach directly from the email app so that was the email you also have some other apps that you can install on tab I have installed Dropbox to sync my stuff around it doesn't feel that iCloud is enough to fulfill my needs so that's why I need Dropbox especially for those beautiful pictures I also have a complaint to make here that there is no official iPad app for YouTube so I had to install this one which is a pretty sad thing because it's the iPhone app and you can only press 2x to enlarge it and once again this is a pretty sad thing for a modern tablet to not have a YouTube app and believe me I have searched so if I enter the App Store and I look for YouTube you'll see that there is no iPad app for YouTube we get all sorts of video downloaders, best of YouTube, SoundHound video tube free but no YouTube here so the quarrel between Apple and Google continues and we are the victims one purpose of this tablet aside from watching videos and listening to music is obviously reading books and this is where iBooks come in, comes into play not much has changed since it was first launched I was reading Oliver Twist but let's check out the main library on the tablet so this is how you see your books there's also a store obviously where you can find a lot of content and once again not much has changed when it comes to interface and interaction and people are actually not pretty pleased with this interface as far as I've heard from their feedback they're happier with Amazon's option but that's an entirely different story of course you can install the Amazon e-reader and uh, download books from them but this is the iBooks I'm talking about and these are the options of the book reader you can play with the brightness like this, change the size of fonts use several types of fonts like Georgia I1, Times New Roman and other stuff like that you can also use some themes like sepia, night or white depending on uh, the ones that you like best you can also look stuff up, a word or page number so let's say uh, since this is French you can search the web and search Wikipedia or search certain pages for a certain word which is pretty cool you can also leave a sign and continue reading from where you left off so the e-reading experience is good but it's exactly the same as you knew it nothing has improved and nothing has changed not in a big way of course we installed some of the regular apps that people usually install when they buy, they buy a tablet we installed GarageBand another app that's basically the same as you knew it it may have a few samples extra or a few instruments but now it's uh, on a smaller screen so you can try to compose a song like this go to the instruments go acoustic you can resort to a piano 
you can record your stuff you can uh, put these layers of songs right here and record them not so good with GarageBand but maybe later on okay so now I'm closing GarageBand and as I said the full suite of apps that people usually install are available right here I have also installed iPhoto and I've done some editing in it and it actually works pretty well Initially it may seem that it's uh, moving slower, but the overall experience is that it's actually pretty good. The picture I took earlier, I can have fun with it and edit it however I want. I can saturate it in some areas and I can also tweak with the colors. Play with different shades. I can also change the brightness, focus, contrast and other options like that. So iPhoto works fine, GarageBand works fine. I can't say that the dual core CPU is pulling any of them down. I must say that I'm a bit disappointed that we don't have uh, pass booking here. Disappointed and surprised. We also have pages installed and iMovie but about them later. Obviously we've got Siri on board so let's see what Siri can do. Yankees. Let's see, here's the roster for the Yankees. Okay, so show me the roster for the Yankees. Find cabs in New York. I found 15 places matching Cassie fairly close to New York. You understand Cassie, not cabs. Find taxi in New York. I found 15 cab companies fairly close to New York City, New York. Post to Facebook. What would you like your message to say? So, just like on the iPhone and the other okay. devices with iOS that support the latest iOS, you can post to Facebook or to Twitter and uh, you can also open apps. So, for example, if I say Angry Birds, it will try to open Angry Birds. There is also voice search in the App Store. So, if I'm looking for YouTube or something like that. Angry Birds. So this is my command, Angry Birds, it understood it right, so it's pretty good to have those hand gestures with multitasking and the voice commands to get around and do your search on the device or look for stuff. But sadly we have no GPS on the device, I'm reminding of you of that yet again. And uh, other things worth mentioning is that we also have the option of playing with iMovie. This one is the benchmark app, if you want, of this tablet, since it may be the one that uh, works the CPU the most so if I want to start a new project I can use one of my samples like this I can add some music, some videos, some photos some sound effects like the camera shutter and maybe a song in the background and the tablet handles all the tasks tasks pretty well although some people were doubting that you can have a full iMovie or GarageBand experience without lag initial lag is expected but till the end the experience is quite normal so we also got pages installed so you can do your hard work for creating a document or a letter or whatever you need maybe a project proposal like this we have all the options we need here we can change the fonts you can change the sizes the alignment so this is a sort of Office Word replacement, but apparently Office will be coming to iOS next year. That's an entirely different story. So overall, we can make good use of all the apps available right now in the App Store. 200,000 iPad apps. And once again, the thing I regret the most is the 4 to 3 aspect ratio of the tablet. Another thing I must mention about this device is that it has um, very good Wi-Fi connection speeds. I really was impressed by that when downloading games and apps and stuff like that. It has a dual band uh, Wi-Fi, 2.5 GHz, 5 GHz, A, B, G and N Wi-Fi and it works very fast and very well. So let's have a look at maps. Even if it doesn't have a GPS, the tablet can still offer a nice view of London for example, thanks to the flyover feature. Going to London and using flyover this is the first time I'm using flyover on something that's not an iPhone so I'm looking forward to see how it does 
So let's go to London. Zoom in and enjoy the beauty of the town. Maybe in landscape mode. So they actually look pretty cool. They also have some landmarks now like pubs and other stuff like that. But it takes a while to load. That's a problem with Apple Maps. And once again this device doesn't quite have a GPS so you have to do it admiring the view. While the Nexus 7 does have a GPS but that's another story altogether. So flyover looks fine. There seems to be a bit of lag frankly speaking when loading all this. Maybe it's too graphically intensive. But overall the dual core Apple A5 CPU handles everything well. And by everything I mean iMovie and GarageBand for example. And now it's time for the conclusions of this device, so we have the pros and cons for this tablet. First of all, I like to say that I like the design very much, easy to hold with one hand and not use with one hand. And when held in landscape mode, I'm pretty happy with the way you can cover all the screens. So the 7.9 inch format was a brilliant idea from Apple, so the design fits the pros area. Also the camera, the camera is very good, we've shown you a bunch of samples to convince you of that matter and it actually takes pretty good photos. There is also a decent behavior of the CPU and RAM, dual core 1 GHz Apple A5 CPU, 512 MB of RAM, they handle everything well. And uh, that everything includes a lot of multitasking with iMovie, with maps. There, is, are, there are slight bumps in performance when opening the intensive apps but everything is fine. The battery is frankly the selling point of the tablet. I've been messing around with the tablet while preparing this review and I only used up 8% of the battery with a lot of Wi-Fi and constantly browsing the web. So you'll easily get 2 days of use with this brilliant tablet when it comes to battery. It's superior to any other tablet on the market when it comes to battery life on such a small format. So that's a clear thing. Also the number of apps is a good thing to mention uh, on this device. And the comfortable keyboard and how light and easy to use is the device. On the con side, we don't have a GPS, the screen has a low resolution, the speakers were a bit underwhelming and the tablet, tablet vibrates. The 4 to 3 aspect ratio is a disappointment. We don't have a decent YouTube app. And the price is pretty big if you think that there's a $199 tablet out there that's got a quad-core CPU and it's the Nexus 7. So maybe the fact that the tablet is too wide may be another cons for some people but the pros and cons are pretty close this time. However if you're really influenced by the GPS speakers and the 4 to 3 aspect ratio you may not want this tablet, who knows. So for design we give it a 9 out of 10, for hardware an 8.5 out of 10 and for operating system and user interface a 9 out of 10. The total is 8.83 out of 10 for the iPad mini and uh, once again it's a tablet for the people who know and love iOS if you simply want to start over with a new and cheap 7 inch tablet then the Nexus 7 is the tablet for you or the Amazon Kindle Fire HD maybe however if you want an iOS device and that's all you can have the iPad mini is a good thing to start with if you don't want to spend too much money. After all, it's the cheapest iOS tablet right now with a new generation of hardware on it. So get on it. iPad mini is the thing to buy if you want iOS. If not, Nexus 7. That's it from tabletnews.com. Bye bye.